great thing about all the new medications that are available is that there are lots of options. But the hard thing about options is it can sometimes be really confusing. And I really struggled with trying to find the right medication that I would take for effectively the rest of my life. So after the diagnosis, I was given a choice by my neurologist and some pamphlets to have a look at for disease-modifying drugs. Uh, and that's confrontational because you don't know in layman's terms what any of these drugs are. So disease-modifying therapies are medical treatments that change the way the immune system works and reduce the number of relapses and reduce the severity of relapses in people with MS. So some of them work by stopping the immune cells from getting into the brain, from crossing from the blood into the brain. Um, others work by shifting the balance of different types of immune cells in the body. There are some immune cells that are more inflammatory, that like to cause inflammation, and there are some immune cells that actually help calm things down. So the aim of some of the medications is to shift that balance back to a calmer, anti-inflammatory state in the immune system. The sooner you start therapy, the better your overall outcome. It is probably more important to start early than which therapy to choose in the beginning. So there are three main types of medication. There are injectables, there are infusions, like a drip that's um, given to you in the clinic, and also oral medications. So choosing a disease-modifying drug or your, your first disease-modifying drug is actually a complicated decision. Often, being recently diagnosed, you don't have all the information that you need. Um, I think you really need to seek opinions from care professionals who will go through the different medications with you and give you a, a series of choices because you need to make the choice that most suits your lifestyle and your needs and your types of type of MS. So it's about working with your neurologist to get the medication that's best suited to your MS, but also to your life. Um, everybody is different. It's about some people are planning families, some people need to work, to travel. Um, so finding the medication that fits in with your life and your MS, your own personal circumstances, is really important. Whether you're wanting to have children as a woman or whether you're you know, an older man, whether you travel a lot or not. Um, methods of administration are different. They're injection therapies, they're tablets, they're infusion therapies. So for us, really, working with people with MS, it's, it's about a grid. We, we have to work out what the best fit is. In MS centres, there's usually uh, highly qualified nurses that help you making this decision and go for the, your particular case and scenario to help you decide what is the right treatment for you. Your disease activity is one factor. If you have lots of inflammatory lesions, then it's probably better to move to the high efficacy therapies. So these are all factors that need to be discussed in every single patient. It's an individual decision uh, that, that you as a patient need to be comfortable with. Um, and you, but your decision is not something that you need to stick for years. If you can't tolerate the therapy, we can change. When it came to choosing my medication, my neurologist gave me two options. I made it really clear that I hate needles. Um, so she recommended two different types of oral medication. Uh, she gave me the list of side effects for both of those and I went home and picked between the two. Um, and I'm really glad with the choice that I ended up making. So taking my oral medication really isn't a big deal. I take two tablets daily, one in the morning and one in the evening. Um, the only side effect that I have from that is a lot of red flushing skin, um, which probably only happens about once a week. Um, so in the scheme of it being an impact on my life, it really isn't at all. I chose uh, a daily injection and uh, I had an MS nurse who was amazing. She taught me how to do the injections really fast and painlessly. Um, within a few days, I didn't give a second thought to having the injections every day. I would just, you know, count up however many I needed. If I was going somewhere, pop them in my handbag and, and off you go. So the medication that we did decide on is a monthly infusion. So I go into hospital once a month and I'm there for about three hours every month. And it hasn't affected my life at all. I've just, I book it in every time before I leave for the next month and I always have it in my diary and I just know 
that that day is taken up just at the hospital and I take my laptop and I watch movies and my boyfriend comes with me and I do come home and I'm a bit affected by it and I am a bit fatigued that night but literally the next day I'm up and back to normal. So I ended up choosing the one that had uh, the best success rate in my eyes relative to the other ones I guess. Um, I ended up choosing a few of them because the quality of life was better. Uh, with them and the side effects weren't as strong. When you finally decide which disease modifying drug you choose, how do you know if it's working? And what if it's not working, what happens then? So you provide an important part of information in working out whether the treatment's working by monitoring your own symptoms and looking for symptoms which are consistent with relapse. Your neurologist will also probably do MRI scans to look for evidence of silent activity which, occur, which can be seen on MRI. So the disease modifying therapies prevent, prevent relapses and prevent future disability 20, 30 years. So you don't feel that it's working. So, but what we want to achieve, as I said, is no evidence of disease activity, no relapses, no MRI, new MRI lesions. So if that is happening, then the treatment is working. Some people may need to change their treatment. Uh, not every treatment will work for every person, and unfortunately we can't predict who, which treatments will work for which people. Some people will also get uh, side effects to their treatment which are not possible to tolerate and so they may need to treat, change treatment for that reason. If either of those things happen, you should chat to your treating doctor, probably a neurologist, about it. People need to be prepared to change medications if they're not working or they're not working well enough. So even more important than the decision as to which drug you might go on first is actually to buy into and understand the concept of monitoring the disease. So we do that by neurological examinations and of course very close attention to, to relapses or attacks, but also with MRI scans. So we now know that if you're getting new lesions or you're getting relapses on whatever treatment you've chosen, you should change that treatment. Absolutely. So there is a six monthly monitoring guidelines, but we are the first in a port of call if there is new symptoms of you can't tolerate the medication. This again uh, highlights the importance of MS nurses uh, that uh, answer phone calls all the time and then decide if this is something that the neurologist needs to be seen or can it just be uh, you know, recommended by phone or is it better that the GP is dealing with these symptoms. So the disease modifying medications for MS are targeted to stop the relapses, to stop the inflammation. They don't necessarily uh, fix the symptoms of MS or undo the symptoms. So it's really important to talk to your MS team about any symptoms that you're experiencing um, and they can refer you to the appropriate services to um, help with rehab, to help with symptom management techniques. Disease modifying therapies don't have the main goal of getting rid of symptoms. Their predominant goal is to try and prevent relapse. In some people, when they go on effective treatment, their symptoms do get better. Uh, but many people uh, will still continue to have some symptoms while they're on disease-modifying treatments. We think that they probably do prevent disability, particularly when we can show that they've completely controlled the disease. Uh, by which we mean the person is having no relapses and we don't have any evidence of inflammatory activity on the MRI scan. If you think you're having a relapse while taking a disease modifying therapy, you should get in touch with your neurologist or your MS nurse uh, to discuss whether your symptoms need review and uh, possibly have a clinical review so the neurologist will talk to you on the phone possibly or see you in person and then do a physical examination. There's loads of misinformation about MS and it can be very confusing so we want to bust some of the myths that are out there. Myth, there is a cure. Unfortunately at this stage it's false. Often there is overhyped media headlines suggesting we do have a cure. 
and your friends and family are probably going to bombard you with the best intention with these reports. So how do you tell the difference between real and hype? You need to ask a few questions. Is it just an overhyped headline, too good to be true? Does the article reveal the original source? Is that source recent and is it based on research? Was the so-called cure actually trialled in people with MS? These are some of the questions you may want to ask. But remember, don't be embarrassed asking your urologist or your MS nurse because there's new treatments being developed all the time. And you can always check out our website on the latest information and research. And if it is a cure, I promise you, it will be on our website. That's a really valid, people who aren't prepared or ready to start an MS medication, that's a very valid response. I would like to better understand why they've chosen not to. And sometimes it it's, continues to be a valid response. They want to try other therapies first. They want to try dietary things or other things first. Maybe they're just not ready to commit. Maybe the side effect profile is too scary of a medication. Um, and sometimes they have that information wrong. So if I can better understand why they're not ready, I can correct some of that misinformation. And if they're still absolute that they're not yet ready, that's totally fine. What I would like to do with people then is ask for what's their tipping point for starting a medication and how we're going to manage this disease if it's untreated for the time being. So next MRI is going to be planned and how many lesions on that MRI are we willing to accept as normal and how many are we willing to accept as not normal and it's time to go on to a therapy. If there's one thing that I've learned from this that I could pass on to you, that is you can deal with this and you will deal with it and you'll be stronger as a result of everything that you learn.